our machines. They enable us to be creative and produce spectacular structures. We also find magnificent structures in nature. And each of these living structures was also built by machines. Machines that are far more elaborate than anything that humans have ever built. In fact, this log is currently being decomposed by tiny fungi that are vastly more complex than this drone. I might be he. Welcome to the unseen world of organic micro-machines. Every living thing in the world is made of cells. Microbes are single-celled organisms. Advanced life forms have trillions of cells. Inside a cell is a bustling operation of interconnected molecular machinery so sophisticated it would put any modern high-tech factory to shame. This intricate machinery is what gives the cell its remarkable abilities to process energy, execute genetic instructions, and replicate, all with unbelievable efficiency. I'm a biochemist, a scientist who studies the molecules of life. There's never been a more exciting time to be a life scientist. This is a golden age of discovery in molecular biology. Stunning breakthroughs in our understanding of the most fundamental unit of life, the cell, have been coming faster and faster. My own view of the cell took a turn years ago. I was in a lab at the National Institutes of Health doing postdoctoral research. I was discussing the origin of life with a fellow postdoc. As she and I thought about the cell, we wondered how could its complex membrane, proteins, metabolism, genetic code, how could all that have formed by the accumulation of undirected changes? So we were both sort of stunned by the notion, but then we just laughed it off. We figured that even if we didn't know the answer, somebody must know. Well, in the 10 years after that, I didn't come across any science publications that adequately answered the nagging question, exactly how did the cell get to be so complex? Everything I read presumed that those biological mysteries would eventually be solved by Darwin's theory of evolution. Being an evolutionist myself, that was fine with me. Then I came across a book titled Evolution, A Theory and Crisis by a geneticist, Michael Denton. It addressed profound problems with Darwin's theory. It asked hard questions about the origins of life. And it showed that science didn't have the answers. No matter that everyone assumed it did, or assumed that it would eventually, or something. I was flabbergasted by the book. I began to look at biology with a fresh set of eyes, and I started asking questions. Lots of questions. That's what this series is about, asking questions. Not about the why or when, but about the how of biological origins. As I said, there's never been a more exciting and fun time to be a biologist. So I'm really looking forward to jumping into this series, and I hope you'll join me.